All right, then uh, welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question. Sarwal and Mokha's Eri. Mokha likes Eris and Sarwal gave her an Eri consisting of positive integers as a gift. So important thing is positive integers. Mokha thinks that for an Eri of positive integers A, positive integers A, it is good if and only if the DCD of all the elements in A is no more than its length. So an Eri A is considered good if, if and only if, if and only if the DCD basically the DCD of all the elements A I is no more than its length. So DCD is less than equals to uh, let's just call it like this array length, right? So mod A is basically array length. So an array is good. So this is the definition when array is good, right? So an array is good if the DCD of all the elements is less than equals to its length. Fine. And for an array of at least two positive integers, at least two positive integers, it is beautiful if and only if all of its prefixes whose length is no less than two. Okay, fine. So now they are defining something called as a beautiful. First, they define something as good. So maybe I'll just use a different color here. This is the definition of good. Now they're defining something as beautiful. So when they call an array beautiful, so they're calling this array beautiful when, when they're calling if and only if, if and only if all of its prefixes whose length is no less than 2, basically length is greater than equals to 2, right? No less than 2 means greater than equals to 2 are good. So this one thing here, you observe here, when they're using these terms no more than, uh, no less than, they're just trying to confuse you, okay? No more than its length means less than equals to its length, right? So that's more psychologically easy for you to think. And then here, uh, okay, so wherever I was saying, first the definition of, there was a definition of uh, array being good was given. The DCD of all the elements has to be less than equals to its length. Now the definition of array being beautiful is all the prefixes whose length is no less than 2, that is greater than equals to 2. That is, let's say a prefix of size 2, a prefix of size 3, right? So maybe if I draw it better way, then you'll get it. So let's say these are array, right? This is our array. Fine. So this array is beautiful if if and only if all of its prefixes whose length is no less than 2 that is greater than equals to 2 are good. Okay. So that means this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. What is the definition of good? DCD of them. DCD of them is less than equals to its length. Okay. DCD is less than equals to its length. Fine. So then they have given a definition. So I, I, I hope you have just read it. 3, 6 is not good. Why 3, 6 is not good? Because the GCD is 3 and it is greater than length 2. Now, 1, 2, 4 is both good and beautiful. So why it's both good and beautiful? Let's see. All the prefixes of length greater than equals to 2, 2. That is first 1, 2 and 1, 2, 4, right? So we're not concerned about the single size prefixes. Let's see why it's beautiful. So if you want to check whether something is beautiful, you just need to check all the prefixes of length greater than equals to 2. So is 1, 2 good? The GCD here is 2. So yeah, it's good. Because 2 is less than equals to 2, right? So, okay. Is 1, 2 good? Yeah, it's good. Because, uh, why it's good? Because its DCD is less than equals to 2, the length. Is 1, 2, 4 good? What is the GCD? The GCD is 2. GCD is 2. 2 is less than equals to 3. It's length. So, we're fine. The definition of good and beautiful is clear, right? So, an array is good if GCD of all the elements is less than equals to length. Length. And an array is beautiful. An array is beautiful. Okay. Array is beautiful. When, when all of its prefixes of size greater than equals to 2 are good. Okay. Now this question, when you read it in the contest, uh, you'll hate competitive programming, frankly. <laughs> okay, if you're a beginner, you'll hate competitive programming when you see this question. Because like a lot of things happens here. Like, first of all, like, I know, I'm, I, I'm, when I see something about GCD, I scratch my head a little bit. Okay, what should be done? So, okay, so that's one thing. When GCD will put you off and then the definition of this good and beautiful will scare you like anything. Okay. So you'll just feel like, okay, you, uh, computer programming is not your cup of tea and then you'll give up. Because since it is an A question, but despite you knowing this question is very easy, you reading this will only consume, I guess, around 5-10 minutes and then you'll give up. <laughs> That's what will happen. But uh, I want to break that myth here. So let's just see. Let's go back to the basics. You know it's an A-rated question, right? So be humble. First, don't worry uh, about all this definition, good, beautiful and all those stuff. Uh, think about what you're supposed to do, right? Think about what you're supposed to do. Right. So, okay. So if you have read till this part, uh, don't, don't get scared. Just keep reading, keep reading. So let's say, what is the question here? Now Mocha gives you a gift array A of N positive integers. So now we are given an array N of positive integers. She wants to know whether array A could become beautiful by reordering the elements in A. So our end goal is to make an array beautiful. What is a beautiful array? Prefixes of size greater than equals to 2 are good. That is the GCD is less than equals to the length. Fine. So we have an array A. So now the question starts. Okay. This all was just a description of a good, beautiful and all. The question is this part. Okay, so this part is only your question. Okay, so what is the question? We are given an array A of positive integers and uh, we want to know whether array A could become beautiful by reordering the elements of A. 
okay so element can be reordered so now fine so question let me tell you the question you are given an array a and now they are asking can you reorder the elements of this a so let's say become a dash such that now this a dash is beautiful so what is the definition of beautiful the prefixes the prefixes are good prefixes of size greater than equals to 2 are good what is the definition of good the gcd has to be greater than equals to 2 fine that's what you want to do now let's see how you can approach this question of course if it's possible print yes otherwise no cool let's see how do you think about this question so what are you after don't worry about good beautiful and all uh, go to very basics just very basics what do you want to do think in a very dumb manner what do you want to do okay so you are given an array a i don't know what is the size i'll take a size let's say n equals to 5 i don't know what the array is but i have a 5 size array i have a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 right so now i want to reorder them i want to reorder them such that gcd of this prefixes is not greater than equal to their length so basically i want the gcd to be basically less than equals to 2 right that's what i want i want the gcd of these guys to be less than equals to 3 i want gcd of these guys to be less than equals to 4 i want the gcd of these guys to be less than equals to 5 that's what i want right that's what i want now what do you know about gcd first of all see uh, even a 2 gcd has to be less than equal to okay so you are given a and then you can reorder right so let's say after uh, reordering this is the configuration you got okay even a 2 is fine fine so you want that even a 2 gcd is less than equals to 2 you want even a 2 a 3 gcd less than equals to 3 okay gcd right so think about the properties of gcd what is the simplest property of gcd you know so what is gcd by the way okay i hope you know this so let's say your numbers x and y and let's say x is something like 2 power 7 uh, into 3 power 5 and y is something let's say 2 power 5 into maybe 3 power 7 so the way you calculate gcd of these two guys is you just uh, this is a prime factorization by the way guys you just take the lowest powers here so x gcd gcd of x and y would be basically 2 power 5 into 3 power 5 right so greatest common divisor or highest common factor so you just take the smallest powers so among the same prime factor you just take the smallest powers and that's how you find gcd fine so that's one property of gcd so this is what gcd is did you observe one thing here about GCD? GCD, you observe one thing here. GCD of AB is like is always less than equals to minimum of AB. Right? That's obvious. I is common divisor, right? So if you have 2, 4, the GCD can be worse 2. It cannot be greater than that. That's one property of GCD that, that should come to your mind. See, I'm just thinking if the, if you come up with this question how should you think in the contest i'm not going to give you the solution right now because i will give you the solution solution is stupid you're going to laugh if i just give you the solution but i'm teaching you how you can think about this question okay so bear with me i'll come to the solution and then you'll laugh at yourself why were you worried about this question anyway so when gcd comes to your mind okay this is what gcd is fine and gcd of ab is less than equals to gcd of ab uh, minimum of ab right so but i have to do like here in my question i have to do first gcd of a1 then i have to do a1 a2 a3 then a1 a2 a3 a4 so it's not very difficult to see gcd of ab okay gcd of ab is less than equals to minimum of ab right so if i do gcd of abc it is less than equals to minimum of abc right it is less than equals to minimum of abc or it's not wrong to write uh, it's not wrong to say gcd of abc is less than equals to gcd of ab right it's not very difficult to see again right makes sense if you have ab is gcd and you add a c to it c can either decrease the gcd c can either decrease the entire gcd or it can keep it same right so maybe okay what i'm saying is let's say you have two fours gcd right if you add one more number if you add one more okay two four is not a good example let me just take it uh, maybe four and sixteen 4 and 16 right so here the gcd is what 4 right if i add one more number it can either decrease the gcd or keep the gcd same for example let's say i decide to add a i decide to add 2 so now it's going to decrease the gcd to 2 right so but it can never make the gcd greater than 4 let's say if i decide to add 8 then again the gcd is 4 right so addition of a new element cannot increase the gcd Right, this is the observation. Can you make it? Addition of a new element, addition of a new element cannot increase the GCD. Right? It cannot increase the GCD. So what does it say? What does it say? 
you want the gcd here to be less than equals to 2 right you want the gcd here to be less than equals to 2 you want the gcd here to be less than equals to 3 right but right so what i was saying is you find out a pair whose gcd is 2 or maybe less than that right so maybe uh, gcd can be 1 also right so gcd can be the worst case 1 or 2 so if you just find out a pair with gcd less than equals to 2 you can always put those here and doesn't matter what do you put here guys anyway this will never be like this part will never have the gcd greater than equals to 2 okay so i don't think i maybe have went too fast so what i'm saying is if you are able to find a pair ai aj such that the gcd is less than equals to 2 what you can do is you can just put ai aj here so you definitely know this part's gcd is less than equals to 2 that is either 2 or 1 now who cares what do you put here who cares how you put the remaining elements here if this part's gcd is 2 you know this part's gcd can never exceed 2 this part gcd can never exceed 2 right this part gcd can never exceed 2 because of this property adding a new number adding a new number to the original set doesn't increase the gcd it can either keep it same or reduce it so if i just find out a pair with gcd less than equals to 2 i can just put it at the first start i can just put it at the start and doesn't matter how you put rest the elements rest of the elements but if you're not able to find this pair anyway it doesn't uh, you cannot get it right so all this drama was there here uh, about good beautiful and all it all boiled down to you were after a rearrangement such that a prefix of size 2 has gcd less than equals to 2 prefix of size 3 has gcd less than equals to 3 uh, prefix of size 4 has gcd less than equals to 4 after carefully examining the gcd's property we found out that adding an element to a, or adding element to a set of uh, numbers while calculating gcd it doesn't increase its gcd right so if i am able to just find the find two numbers just find two numbers such that such that the gcd is less than equals to 2 i can create my array how just put those elements at the start and just uh, put rest, rest rest of the elements any you want since the first two guys gcd is less than equals to you are definitely sure these guys gcd is less than equals to 2 that is less than equals to 3 these guys gcd is less than equals to 4 that is less less than equals to 4 why because it is less than equals to 2 right so the gcd of every other prefix cannot exceed 2 that means they stay they are in the bounds they are less than equals to 3 less than equals to 4 and so on and so forth right so the question is very simple if you are able to find such pair, if you are able to find such pair whose GCD is less than equals to 2, then answer is yes, but no. And the constraints were less, okay, the constraints were very less uh, that you can actually go through all the pairs, if I am not wrong. Right, so n was very small here, you can see, n was just 100. So, the order of n square solution will work. So, okay, if I am being very honest, 500 into 100 was the total size, right? So, 500 into 100. So, hmm, yeah, so 5 into, I guess, 10 power 4, right, if I am not wrong, yeah, 5 into 10 power 4. So if this is the constraint, so then you can always run it in order of n square. So order of n square loop will work here. So let, let's just uh, see the code. So again, the code is also very simple for this one. So I'm not going to waste your time by typing it out. So this is fine. This is the area input. And then uh, I've initialized a Boolean. Yes. So I'm initially assuming that no such pair exists whose GCD is less than equals to 2. And then I'm going to go through each and every pair. And if I found out a pair whose GCD is less than equals to 2, I'm going to make this yes true and break out of the loop. And if at the end, this yes was never made false. Uh, basically, if this yes was never made true, then I can print no. Right? If this yes was never made true, then you didn't find any pair. So you can print no. Otherwise, you can print yes. Otherwise, uh, you can print yes. Right? So basically, uh, if yes means if yes was some some the pair was found whose GCD is less than equals to two. Fine. So the way I am checking pairs is basically i goes from zero to n and j goes from uh, okay. They should be i plus one, right? So j goes from i plus one till n. So I am checking like this a one a2 so you know you have at least two elements right so let's say if i a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 i'm going like this i'm checking a1 a2 then a1 a2 a3 uh, okay a1 a3 then uh, a1 a4 then a1 a5 then uh, a2 a3 a2 a4 a, so on and so forth right? so that's what these two loops are doing and if you found out a pair whose gcd is less than equals to 2 then just make this boolean true this concept of boolean i think if you're following the playlist till now you should be able to know okay fine so that's that uh, I don't think I have anything else to discuss for this. If you have any doubts, then leave it in the comments and please like the video. Um, fine, yeah. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.